Hello, thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. For today's Money Wisdom series, we are going to talk about orchestrating a plan for your finances, orchestrating a plan for your finances. So for those of you all who are interested in doing some things to help uh, you get a better understanding um, of your money coming in and going out, then uh, you will need to pull out a piece of paper and a pen. Some things that I have uh, come across over the years to help with allocating money, especially for those who are younger, is the envelope system. And I have personally uh, used this and it has worked. The the, uh, money system uh, using envelopes is uh, basically involving cash. So you would uh, take a trip over to your uh, bank or to your ATM. Or uh, when you shop and you will get some cash, okay, out. Um, the cash that you get out is based on uh, a routine need. So, for instance, if you know you typically spend about 50 to $100 going to um, a store, okay, and you know this happens every single month, this 50 to $100, instead of using your debit card, you would take that money out um, and you would have your uh, money placed in an envelope system. Okay. Uh, you will put that money in one envelope called spending because you already know you are guaranteed to spend that 50 to a hundred dollars that month. So you will put that money in the spending envelope. Then let's say that you have a habit of giving. Okay. It's $5 to the guy on the street, um, $20 to the church, um, $10 to your child. You just seem to have these moments that uh, come up, maybe not every single month, but every other month possibly. So you will put some money away um, in your donation envelope. So you will label that donation. Okay. And let's say that that's that 25 or $30. That's unexpected. It's a small amount, but you will put that in that envelope. Okay. So then you have another envelope in that envelope is your investments. Okay. The, this money is the money that you intend on taking and putting it into something that's going to grow over time. Okay. So your intention might be to buy a stock or a mutual fund or something. So that is where you're going to put that cash. And then when you are ready to invest, you're going to take that cash and deposit it into whatever account you plan on using to purchase your stock or mutual fund. Okay. And then your next envelope is, of course, your savings envelope. And this money is the money that you use when something unexpected tends to happen. And you will just keep adding to that envelope, okay? If your goal is $500, um, $1,000, what have you, that is the money that you're going to use to make sure that when that sudden need comes up, or unexpected expense, you'll be able to at least make a payment, if not pay the whole thing off, depending on how much money you put in that savings envelope. Now, how you determine an unexpected expense, I would say pray and ask the Lord, okay? You may get a dollar figure, you may not, but at least start putting something in that envelope, okay? Um, it may be $20 this month, then the next month is $40, and then the next month is 60 and what have you. This Envelope system I have seen um, in different videos and I've also seen people use it offline and I have also personally used it and I've also asked younger people how um, it worked for them and uh, they said that it worked fine. So um, if you are someone who you're just looking for a different way of doing some things, something to kind of keep track of your cash, um, then this is a good way because Another thing is, is that when you take money out of the envelope, you can write yourself a receipt and on that receipt, you can tell yourself what you did with that money. Okay. This way you're able to keep track of your cash better. Um, you may want to take the receipt from the store and stick it in that envelope or envelopes. Okay. Um, all right. So that is one way of getting the cash, um, in an order where you can kind of monitor it, um, 
And another system, of course, is to use bank accounts to do the same thing. You have a savings bank account. You have a spending bank account. You have a donation bank account. Um, and you have a... Um, and you and, and you also I'm losing track here saving spending donating um and investing okay and you can uh divide up your money that way uh, via different bank accounts um preferably ones that you don't have to pay um a monthly fee on so do check for those bank accounts where there are no monthly fees and they do exist okay now another thing that you can do is when it comes when it comes to bills that you might have to um, share with other people, uh, make sure that you have your own tracking system. Um, make sure that uh, you all are in agreement in terms of how much money will be coming out of that shared account or how much money will be contributed to getting certain bills paid. OK, um, and if you can have an automatic withdrawal system. Um, in order to get those bills taken care of, that is perfect. Because in this way, there is no one coming and saying, okay, do you have the money? Do you have the money? Do you have the money? Okay. Um, I have noticed that that has worked over the years uh, when you're able to um, have a meeting of the minds. Um, not necessarily sharing the account. Um, I've noticed that... Um, that's not what worked so well, but what did work was um, having the automatic withdrawal system so that the money just went right to whatever the bill was. OK, so instead of paying one single payment, um, there's money coming from this person, there's money coming from that person. And now the bill is paid each month. OK. All right. Another thing that you might want to consider is to start researching in terms of ways that you can get supplemental money. And this is for people who um, could use an extra 20, 50, 100, you know, 200 bucks or more a month. I know it's not a lot, but hey, every little bit helps. Um, so start researching and finding out additional ways you can bring money in. If that means you got to work part time from home or work part time somewhere else, then that's what you do. But um, solely relying on one source of income, I will tell you that you never know when a company is going to lay someone off or decide that they want to get rid of you. You want to make sure that you have some money established coming from somewhere okay um, some ideas that I've come across were um, creating your own product and selling it online purchasing products that other people have already made and selling them online uh, coming up with uh, ways to make money from your existing project so maybe you have a website ways to add additional tools um, advertising and so forth on there um, to make money. Uh, there are ways that you can make money offline. Maybe you want to babysit every now and again, find out who in the family uh, could use a babysitter, especially on weekends. Uh, and then you can make an extra 20, 30, 40 bucks for a few hours watching someone's child, um, washing cars, um, doing lawns, uh, running errands for people, doing house cleaning, okay? Whatever you can do, whatever you know that your hands and your legs um, can do, then why not, okay? Um, because there's just far too many people who they complain about not having enough money, but they're not willing to do anything more to get more money. OK, you may have to put somebody to work that's in your house. OK, so look for some ways that they can be able to use their computer, use the phone um, and any other tools they might have to make some money from home. OK, um, there are jobs for teenagers. There's no reason why teenagers should be sitting at home, eating up everything, sleeping all day um, on the weekends when there are so many different ways to make some extra money. OK, they can dedicate anywhere from two to six hours on a weekend sitting in front of the computer taking surveys. Um, they can be able to create some websites and blogs and some other things that um, both of you all could populate 
uh, to uh, bring in some advertising revenue, okay, or create a new product or service. You can get them in on some of those things. So there are ways to make extra money. Okay, now when you are in a financial bind, and we're talking about the kind of bind where you don't have time to develop anything, create anything, put anybody to work or what have you, but you need some money like right now, you can always sell something that you've purchased recently that you know you haven't used, practically new. You can take it back to the store, get your money back, or sell it um, at a marketplace on the Internet. Okay, Um, you can uh, borrow money. Okay, you can go through a lending service, peer lending. Uh, You can uh, go uh, through uh, relatives um, and friends. You can also uh, borrow money via a credit card or you can take out a payday loan. These are things that you really don't want to have to do unless you have no choice. Okay, you can also look for um, programs that can discount some of your existing bills. So that means getting on the phone. Um, that means uh, checking the internet and researching and finding out what type of discounts are out there for people with uh, utilities, with telephone um, services, and so forth, um, discounting rent, what have you. Okay. Um, so there are so many different ways that if you need some money, like right now, then you can figure it out. Okay, Um, you can also do some research on the Internet to find out how other people have gotten money pretty quickly. Okay, Um, if you got to do door to door sales and offer service or what have you or sell a product, then you do that. But either way, you just want to make sure that you can, you know, just hold some people back a bit. Okay. It might be collectors calling. It might be somebody threatening to take something away from you. You might have to. um you know, put your house up for collateral or something. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that people will do when they're in a tough bind. Okay. Uh, all right. So I have given you, um, some thoughts, some things that you could, um, start implementing like today. I hope that, um, this audio has been beneficial. We will continue money wisdom, Uh, So please do subscribe if you haven't already. You've been listening to YouTube NM Enterprise 7. Also, if uh, you uh, would uh, like to check the description box for anything that might be of interest, then do that. Um, I tend to have books as well as um, blogs and so forth that are down there that can help out with um, some uh, things that people are dealing with. And then... um, If you haven't given, we do welcome donations. So um, when some of you all are on your feet and you don't mind um, just helping out uh, this uh, particular channel, then by all means, we do welcome that. So that is it. Please do uh, just listen in for the next Money Wisdom series. To God be the glory.